Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel series. This is going to be chapter 18. Uh, basically, this chapter says the spiritual sins of the Father will not be transferred to the children. So let's get going. Ezekiel 18, verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh, came unto me again, saying, verse 2. What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge on edge. So does what the fathers eat affect the children's teeth? Verse 3. As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, uh, we're talking about having a feast unto the devils, you know, the high places, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath deviled, defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a menstruous woman. You know, I honestly believe that the women's time of the month of bleeding has to do with uh, what happened in Genesis chapter 3. But that's just my opinion. Evidently, the Lord didn't like husbands and wives uh, having pleasure when she was time of the month. I'm trying not to be crude here, but, you know. Verse 7. And hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment. You know, this is exactly the same type of language in James chapter 2. God says, your works will reflect your faith. I mean, you know, we could take a look at that. But uh, I've beaten James chapter 2 to death, I think, so... That's basically saying, you know, if uh, if you see somebody that's naked and hungry and, you know, you don't offer them some clothing and some food, what good is your faith? And basically it says faith without works is death, is dead being alone. You don't earn your salvation by your works but your works do reflect what you believe now let's face it an apple tree produces apples because wait for it it's an apple tree and if an apple tree doesn't produce any apples what good is it cut it down burn it and plant something else in its place it's going to produce fruit can I get an amen? Yeah, amen. I mean, if you're going to have a tree taking up space and it doesn't do anything, get rid of it. 
You think the Lord doesn't feel the same way? Oh, yeah. Of course he does. Verse 8. He that hath not given forth upon usury, neither have taken any increase, that hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man. And what is true judgment between man and man? Like a judge. You know, just because a rich guy uh, slips a campaign contribution under the table, well, they call it a bribe. The Bible calls it a gift, but we call it a bribe. Woe be to the judges that take bribes to pervert judgment. I'll tell you what, look into the... Um, the guy that invented Windows, and no, it wasn't Bill Gates, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. I think the guy that really invented Windows took old Billy Goat to uh, court, and he lost, even though those in the uh, information technology com uh, community who know the real deal know that uh, who invented Windows. Of course, they stole it. Did you know old Billy Goat Gates is a Rocky Feller heir? He's a cousin of one of the you-know-whos. Yeah. Yeah, the oil people. But everybody thinks, oh yeah, he's you know, a guy has no medical training, and yet he's telling us how to live our lives with uh, health care. Isn't that, isn't that just lovely? Verse 9. Well, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live saith the Lord God. See, your works are reflected by what you really believe. Verse 10. If he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like of any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even, even hath eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination. God doesn't like people... Uh, playing with other people's wives. I know that firsthand. Trust me. It almost cost me my life. Of course, the Lord had to do a lot to get my attention, but uh, he grabbed me by the throat and shook me around and says, you're going to listen to me, boy, or I'm going to kill you. Well, not really, but that's how I felt. But he got my attention. And he's holy and righteous, and I'm sinful and wicked. Hath given forth upon usury, and hath taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Oh, yeah. You want to do wickedness? Your death will be on your own head. Verse 14. Now, lo, if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sins, which he hath done and considered and doeth not such like. So here it is. The father is an evil guy, but he has a son. But the son's not like the dad. Uh-uh. Verse 15 that hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither uh, and hath not defiled his neighbor's wife, 
neither hath oppressed any, hath not withholden the pledge, neither hath spoiled by violence, but hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment. Well, let's take a look at Matthew 25, verse 31. You know, that's the thing. You do good works, and there's actually devils out there that'll say, oh, well, you, you believe in lordship salvation. You know, oh, you're earning your salvation. You know what? Let these devils argue with Christ. Don't argue with me. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Yeah, it's funny how communists and socialists always call themselves the left, isn't it? Isn't that funny how that works? Yeah. Verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. Yeah, I didn't have any clothes in the winter, man, and it was cold. But you gave me... You gave me some warm stuff to wear. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, The scariest words you could probably ever hear in your entire lifetime. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Did you know the devil has angels? Oh yeah, the devil has angels. A lot of them. Matter of fact, they're in politics. They're in charge of virtually every country in the world now. Verse 42. For I was in hungered, and ye gave me no meat. Yeah, I was hungry, and you wouldn't bother to feed me. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. You know, there are restaurants, the big chains especially, like Red Lobster. Do you know they don't even feed their people? Oh, well, yeah. If you want a, if you want a dinner there, well, they'll sell it to you. Well, we'll give you an employee discount. They would rather throw the food in the garbage than give it to their employees. I mean, can you imagine that? I hope the... I'm sure there's a lot of uh, names with Stein and Berg at the end who uh, on the board of directors and what have you, you know, I mean, really, somebody works for you for eight hours and you won't even give them something to eat. Really? I'd rather throw it in the garbage. 
terrible. May the Lord give them their reward. And I don't think they're going to need a winter coat where they're going. So, they were hungry, they got no food. They were thirsty, no drink. They were a stranger and they didn't give them a place to stay. Naked, they didn't give them any clothes. In prison and sick, no visits. Verse 44, Then shall they also say unto him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered or thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Yep. All right, let's go back. Ezekiel chapter 18. And verse 17. That hath taken off his hand from the poor, that hath not received usury nor increase, hath executed my judgments, hath walked in my statutes, he shall not die. For the iniquity of his father, he shall surely live. Now, there's something I should mention here. I'm going to get off on a little tangent here. Uh, they're talking about spiritual sins. There are physical sins that affect the uh, children. For example, I live in Florida most of my life. In 1980, I got married to a wonderful girl that loved me to death. And... Uh, I screw that up. But the thing is, Florida used to require a blood test before you got a, you know, your marriage license. Reason being, they wanted to make sure that you and the woman didn't have any diseases sexually transmitted. They used to call it venereal diseases, VD, STDs, you know. And when a child was born, it was routine to take uh, silver, I think it was silver nitrate, I'm not sure, but it was a silver solution. And they would put drops in the children's eyes. Reason being, if the mother was giving birth and she had, I think it was syphilis, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was syphilis, um, the silver would kill it before it got to in, infected their eyes from the vaginal cavity, if you, you know, catch my drift during childbirth. Because if you got syphilis and you were, your eyes were infected as a young child, I mean, you'd be blind before you got to adulthood. Uh, syphilis was bad news, people. But uh, I don't think they do that anymore, you know. So if the father or the mother was messing around and caught a disease, the child could get it, even though the child had nothing to do with it and was, you know, free of the, free of the sin of the parents. But there were physical sins and then spiritual sins. And I, my opinion is this is referring to spiritual sins, you know, stealing uh, lying, murder, that's all spiritual type sins. Whereas if you're playing around with your neighbor's wife who's playing around with everybody else and she gives you a present or you give her a present, well, you know, have a child and next thing you know, the child's got... Uh, oh, you want to look up something really amazing. Uh... There's a thing when they're doing a, a certain group of people do circumcisions and then they use their mouth to uh, uh, 
take up the blood, you know, instead of using a towel or something. And, uh, you know, the circumcision. And they were finding out that the babies were getting genital herpes. Well, the mother didn't have it. This father doesn't have it. Where did it come from? The guy that did the circumcision. Oh, yeah. with his, And he used his mouth. Really? Yeah. Uh, this is a real thing, people. I'm not making this up. Uh, the you-know-whos. <laughs> so, yeah. They got a word name for it, but I don't want to say it because if I do... Uh, the um, AI or whatever will pick up on it. And, but honestly, I'm at the point where I don't care if they delete my channel. I could always go somewhere else, I suppose. But, um, yeah. All right. Ezekiel 18.18. 18. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet say ye, why? Doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes and hath done them, he shall surely live. Verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But, oh, here's that but. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. See, there's always those Torah keepers. They think, oh, we're saved by the law. Saved by the law. No, there was grace in the Old Testament. I mean, read uh, around, I think it's Genesis 6. It says, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know, you're... Your actions reflect what you believe, period. And God forbid you feed the hungry. People will accuse you, oh, you're trying to earn your salvation. Just don't pay any mind to those devils. You know, let them live any way they want. And they, you know, oh, I got eternal security and once saved, always saved. I, I can do anything I want. I'm written in God's book of life. Doesn't matter if I'm a hit man for the mafia, I'm saved. I said a sinner's prayer at, at, at the Billy Goat Graham revival meeting many moons ago. I'm saved. Well, if you didn't feed the sit, uh, hungry and give drinks to the thirsty and Clothed the naked. Yeah, Jesus might have a little something to say about that. Verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God? And the answer to that is no. And not that he should return from his ways and live. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall 
he die? Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Uh, in modern usage, that would be, that's not fair. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear ye, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? Well, let's read Matthew 20. Words of Christ. Verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Now, what's the vineyard? Israel. Verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And he went out again about the sixth hour and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? You know, what are you guys doing standing around doing nothing? Verse 7. They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the evening... The Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the, fir, uh, the last, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. So everybody's getting the same pay here. Whether you worked eight hours, six hours, four hours, or one hour. They all got paid the same. Uh, you know, whether you serve the Lord your whole life or you're the thief on the cross, you all get the same thing, eternal life. Now your rank or your responsibility in the kingdom might be different. But you're still in the kingdom. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, you know, they got people that worked all day. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. Man, this ain't right. That guy only worked for one hour. And I work for eight. And he gets the same pay that I do. Man, I want minimum wage here for eight hours, not one, you know. And when they received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour. And thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Yeah, man, we worked all day. We, you know, we worked from noontime to two, the hottest time of the day. We sweated our butts off. And this guy that shows up at the last minute gets the same thing I get? That's not fair. But he, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? That's right. When I hired you, didn't I say I'll give you a penny for working for me? Did you or did you not agree? And of course, they agreed. A penny. Which was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer back in them days. Now, there was a time a penny was somewhat valuable in the United States, but... Uh, not anymore. I don't even know why they print them anymore or coin them. Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? 
Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? You know, isn't this mine to do as I wish? You know, I can do whatever I want with it, right? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel. Verse 25. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and hath committed iniquity, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. Can I get a spiritual modern day application? Suppose a guy had been a, a righteous person his whole life. Worked at the soup kitchen and passed out clothes to the homeless and, uh, you know, never cheated on his wife and never stole anything and, you know, real upstanding person in the Christian community. Went to church every Sunday faithfully, even on Super Bowl Sunday, right? But when it came time to take the mark of the beast, he took it because after all, but Lord, I have to feed my children. I couldn't feed my children without taking the mark of the beast. Which is basically saying, Lord, I don't trust you to feed us. So I trusted the world. I took the mark of the beast. What did Jesus say about, uh, you know, feeding the sparrows? How about Matthew 6, 25? Therefore I say unto you, Jesus speaking, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment, uh, raiment's clothing, okay? Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? You know, cubit's about 18 inches. Can you uh, take your thought and make yourself 18 inches taller? No. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment, for clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not ours, his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Oh, yeah. So, a guy that's been doing good works all his life and takes the mark of the beast at the very end? Look out, people. Look out. You better have faith that the Lord could take care of you 
even if it comes to the point you can't buy or sell anything, I'm telling you, I wonder, I strongly suspect that we're the generation that's going to see the mark of the beast. Uh, no, I don't think the Bill Gates shot is it. I think it's a precursor. But they're trying to make it so that you're not going to be able to do a lot of things unless you do take it. But I don't think it's it. I really don't. I think it's the, the precursor. I think they're getting us ready for the big, the big, the big deal, the big kahuna. So, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Ezekiel 18.27 Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, Every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent. Repent. Guess what? John the Baptist taught repent. Jesus said repent. The Old Testament prophets said repent. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. And there's a bunch of fake preachers out there that says repent just means to change your mind from unbelief to belief. No. Repent means to turn from your wickedness. And then they'll try to compare you, your repentance, with that of God. Uh, sorry, it doesn't you can't make a comparison. I mean... Jesus was in human flesh, and I'm in human flesh, but that don't mean I'm Jesus, and I never will be. Sorry. A Ford might have four wheels, and a Mercedes-Benz might have four wheels, but I'm telling you, a Ford is not a Mercedes-Benz or a Bentley. What can I tell you? Repent. When the Lord says repent, he repented, and when the Lord tells us to repent, it doesn't mean the same thing. I don't care what that famous preacher over in Tempe, Arizona says. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. It doesn't say repent and turn yourselves from your unbelief, does it? No. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Walk away from sin, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Isn't that what the Bible says in the New Testament? God says he'll put a new heart and 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 a new spirit the Holy Spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel let's read verse 31 again cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Good advice, huh? That is the end of Ezekiel chapter 18. 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.